Hey, I'm James from Soaking Dad Barbecue, and after a battery of tests over a year, I've come up with three reasons why I'm not convinced that the Weber Summit is actually the best Kamado that you can buy. And while I've been testing this over the last year, I actually uncovered three reasons. I'm not even sure this is the best Weber product that you can buy. Let's get into it. Now, before we get into it, two very important disclaimers up front. First, if you already own a Weber Summit, nothing in today's video is going to justify switching from a Weber Summit to any other brand. The cooking performance is not night and day difference. And so nothing that I'm gonna say is designed to make you not absolutely love your Weber Summit Kamado and switch to another brand. Spending thousands of dollars uh, to do that is not going to open up a night and day difference in performance. So if you have one, uh, why don't you tune out right now and just continue to enjoy and love the grill that you've already owned. This is a resource for people who are in the market and comparing the Weber Summit against other top Kamado brands. And speaking of uh, top brands, Weber did provide uh, this Kamado to me at no charge. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video. I don't receive a payment or a commission if you buy this grill or any other brand. I'm not an affiliate with Kamado Joe, Green Hag, Primo, you name it, the list goes on. So no matter what you buy, uh, it impacts me financially in zero way possible, but I did wanna let you know that Weber provided this grill for today's testing. So now that I'm speaking to just the potential Kamado buyers in the room, let's start first with the three reasons why I'm not even sure that this is the best Weber you can buy, and then I'll go into my three reasons why I actually don't think this is the best Kamado that you can buy. So I brought along uh, some notes to uh, keep me honest and give you accurate information here since I'll be referring uh, to a bunch of pricing. In fact, since I mentioned pricing, why don't we start at the first one here, which is the price. So the Weber Summit Kamado that I have in front of me is the E6 model, which starts at 1249 US. And if you were to get the exact same Kamado, but attached to a cart that's called the S6, that is 2149. And so this pricing, if you're comparing it to other Kamados, may not seem that out, out of the ordinary, but if you start comparing this within the Weber family, it stands out like a sore thumb. And so to illustrate this point, let me give you uh, this example here. If you were to go onto Weber.com and start adding to your cart, you could add a Jumbo Joe, an original kettle, a, a kettle premium, a Master Touch, a Performer, a Performer premium, a Smoky Mountain, and you could get all seven of those 22 inch Kamado grills for about 20 bucks less than a single Summit S6. This is absolutely crazy from a price perspective when you start to think about could you argue that a single summit kamado is better than nearly all 22 inch weber models that they make in the charcoal category not that everybody would want to have seven grills in their backyard versus the space taken up by a single grill, but the pricing gets even more crazy from there. So if I were to go with the difference between the E6 and the S6 and add the cart along with the igniter, that adds $900. If you would do the exact same thing with a Weber Performer, the cost difference of going from the standalone cart, kind of like what we have right here, everything in a contained cart, to the side shelf uh, with the integrated fire starter burner added, that's a $200 premium. So for some reason, the same upgraded in workspace and cart as well as ignition capability costs four and a half times more when applied to the Summit than any other Weber product. And before we leave the topic of price, the price is something that Weber themselves have played with. So when this grill was first introduced in 2016, it came out for the three-legged model that I have at $16.99 and dropped $400 about four years later, as well as improving the bottom rigidity of the cart versus just the uh, metal triangle. But since 2020, it has crept back up on both models another $100. So it seems that Weber within the family uh, there's some disagreement in terms of where to price this grill relative to the market given the fluctuations up and down. And I should say, uh, we'll get into this a little bit later, but the 2020 version actually got worse. So not only was there the $400 uh, reduction, but we also lost some key features. You notice uh, on the generation two, I no longer have the charcoal ignition system. And one of the features that I liked in the first generation was a double walled insulated uh, heat diffuser plate, which was foldable. And so you had access to your fire if you wanted to add cooking wood. We went to 
a less expensive single plate uh, metal heat diffuser in the generation two is part of that original $400 price cut, which has been inching uh, back up. Second, Let's talk about performance. Now, one of the first charcoal grills that I ever owned was a Weber product. So none of this is intended to be anti-Weber. I'm a huge fan. In fact, I have a 22 inch Weber Smoky Mountain and I absolutely love it. And one of the things that I've always loved about Weber kettles and the Smoky Mountain is the position of the air vent. And so by having it off to the side, you can create some really great air draw of your smoke over your food. So if you're doing a brisket, we wanted to have our heat and smoke can come on one side and use the placement of the top vent, we're able to help uh, vent out that smoke and get great sort of over the top convection airflow. I've had to go through hoops uh, to try and replicate this inside of something like my Kamado Joe's and the best that I've come up with so far is using the pizza oven uh, accessory, the Dojo. And I was able to measure a 4X improvement in airflow over the top and create almost a miniature version of something like my offset smoker where we get heat on one side being drawn over the top. This is really simple and easy to do on my Smoky Mountain or any original kettle where we could place our fire on one side and then use the exhaust vent on the other side to pull that across. Weber on the summit has gone for the traditional Kamado chimney, which is at the top center, which doesn't give us the ability to move air from side to side. And this was perhaps more uh, clearly illustrated in an example with uh, an accessory that I love on original Weber kettles, which is the SNS basket. I went and bought, that was the first thing that I ordered for my Weber summit in order to be able to do a little bit more effective uh, two zone cooking. But unlike in um, a normal Weber kettle where I could place my exhaust vent to the side and draw that smoke over, I know noticed really stale smoke. So when I cooked some Alabama chicken thighs uh, on the Weber Summit with the SNS basket, I tasted very dirty smoke. And so if you imagine the heat all on one side coming across and then sort of stagnating on the far side before sort of being pulled back up the middle, this is not a flavor profile that you want in barbecue. Everything sort of on the middle to the left was fine. The wings over on this side tasted more like uh, you had dipped them in an ashtray. I know it's a gross analogy, but this is a little bit of the threshold of clean smoke versus dirty smoke. Stale, stagnant smoke with nowhere to go does not taste good in barbecue. And for whatever reason, the Weber Summit does not retain one of my favorite features of almost every other Weber charcoal product, which is the ability to take advantage of the side draft exhaust vents. And so this is an area where I actually notice a step back uh, in performance versus a step ahead versus the significant price of premium. The third reason why I'm not convinced that the Summit is the best Weber within the Weber lineup comes down to accessories. Part of a Kamado experience, I've used this analogy as they are the SUV uh, of the barbecue world, if you will. They're not a single purpose sports car, which would be the best sports car. They're not a single purpose uh, truck. A truck would be better uh, than an SUV uh, at that, but they can do a little bit of all things really, really well. And part of how that comes uh, to be realized is through the accessory ecosystem. And if you look at the official Weber blog for recommended accessories, they list three. There's a raised rack, a charcoal rake, and a cover. There is very little original equipment support from uh, Weber on the 24 inch Summit Kamado. But if you contrast that to the 22 inch uh, Weber uh, Kettle Space and or Smoky Mountain, there's a world of uh, accessories available. So in no particular order, but some of my favorites include the 22 inch rotisserie kit, which is compatible with other 22 inch kettles. In fact, when I had a Kamado Joe Kettle Joe, I installed the 22 inch uh, Weber charcoal rotisserie kit and was able to add rotisserie functionality to something like my Kettle Joe. There's uh, the Hunsaker rib rack. So I have that in my Weber Smoky Mountain for being able to hang ribs, absolutely love it. In fact, came up with a way of even doing that in my Kamado Joe Big Joe One, which has more clearance than the Summit and I was actually able to hang racks of ribs inside of my Kamado grill. There's uh, Only Fire Santa Maria's, which can turn an original 22 inch kettle into a Santa Maria grill. There's pizza oven accessories, Vortexes and charcoal heat diffusers, you name it. 
The 22 inch category absolutely delivers on the accessory ecosystem, but if you choose to move to the 24 inch Weber Summit size, it's just not competitive with every other Weber product in terms of the availability of accessories. So now we've covered three reasons why I'm not sure that the Weber Summit is the best Weber within the Weber lineup. Let's see how it compares on my top three uh, criteria versus other Komodos. I appreciate your time and today's video is brought to you ad interruption free by the team at Original Grain. Speaking of appreciation, Mother's Day's around the corner and Father's Day is coming up quick. So why don't you try out the online watch selection quiz on the Original Grain website to help match your loved ones to that perfect one of a kind timepiece featuring unique and sustainable materials, including some really cool partnerships, not limited to Taylor guitars, Indian motorcycles, TRD, and more. So no matter what resonates with you, the watch quiz will help you find the perfect gift for your loved one. Happy customers have helped plant over 600,000 trees and remove over 250,000 plastic bottles from the ocean. Original Grain offers a buyback guarantee, so if you don't absolutely love the watch, they will buy it back. Use code SMOKING to save an additional 10% off on the Mother's Day sale going on right now at originalgrain.com slash SMOKING and enter the code SMOKING for an additional 10% off. Now, back to the action. So since I started with price at comparing the Weber Summit within the Weber family, let's continue with that theme and number one will be price of the Weber Summit versus other Kamados. At $21.49 to get the side shelf option, which most other Kamados uh, include at that price point. At $21.49, the Weber Summit S6 is expensive. That's $900 or about four and a half times more expensive than getting the same feature and benefit on a Weber kettle. And it's $950 more than something like my Komodo Joe Big Joe Series 1. Not including sale prices here, these are just manufacturer suggested uh, retail prices. And to illustrate what you can get for that price difference between the Weber Summit and my Big Joe Series 1, we could go on a bit of a shopping spree and add some of my favorite accessories. We could add a kick ash basket for the Big Joe along with the kick ash can, uh, which makes it really easy to get the ash uh, out of your grill uh, every single time. Two of my favorite accessories that open up a world of difference, things like the Jotisserie along with the soapstone. And if we want to get our fire going a little bit quicker, we could throw in a grill blazer too. And for about the same price as a stock Weber Summit, you would have a Big Joe Series 1 with all of those features. And if you don't want to add those accessories and just compare functionality stock to stock, the Komodo Joe lineup includes things like an ash tool and a grill gripper to be able to remove those uh, hot grates and move things around all of which are tools which aren't uh, included or available on either model that I have the uh, E6 or the S6 uh, Summit Komodo. And it's not just a Komodo Joe here in terms of pricing. If I go through a couple other uh, brands that you might be looking at in this space, something like the Big Green Egg XL with the Nest, the Handler, and the Acacia side shelves comes in at $22.69. And then on the Primo, uh, which I also have uh, just off camera, the XL, 400 that comes in at 22.99 and then back uh, to Komodo Joe if we were to up from series one to series two because we want maybe things like the airlift hinge the mesh gasket or the control tower top that's available at 19.99 so the Weber Summit is sitting on the upper side of the price band, particularly if you start to look at the included features. And I haven't even got into warranty where all of those ceramic uh, Komodo brands that I mentioned have a lifetime warranty. I'll put up the exact specs here, but we're maximum 10 years on the fireball and metal components. And we're anywhere from two to five years for everything else in between, which depending on how long you plan to keep your grill and many people keep these for a lifetime uh, is not competitive again with the top brands offering lifetime limited warranties on those ceramic components. And lastly on price before we segue into performance, since it's sort of related, is the first generation to the second generation summit, as I mentioned earlier, actually got worse. So despite the $400 price cut, we lost the auto ignition uh, charcoal uh, capability. We lost the thing that I think matters uh, most is the double walled insulated heat diffuser plate with the ability to have access to our firebox. And this is counterintuitive to what every other manufacturer has done. I mentioned 
Prima that I have, its hinge system has improved. Komodo Joe from Series 1 to Series 2, you get the airlift hinge, you get the mesh gasket, you get the control tower top. Big Green Egg has, uh, over time, and added the regulator as a cast iron uh, control top, along with the egg expander system, which is a five-piece kit to try and replicate some of the functionality that you get with the divide and conquer system. So all other competitors in this space, as the generations go on, there's some improvement for the consumer in terms of what you get on the new version versus the old version. Unfortunately, the second generation Weber Summit, I think is worse than the first generation that I had the opportunity to use. And I was expecting to get an improvement on when uh, Weber sent this to me over a year ago. So now that we're dabbling or putting a foot into performance, let's continue on with my second uh, comparison, which is performance versus other Komodo brands. So one of the marketed features from Weber on the Summit is efficiency, which is achieved through the dual walled insulated design that the Summit brings to market in an otherwise ceramic dominated uh, category. Uh, but efficiency is the byproduct of a choice that's made, not the original uh, source of what's actually impacting our cooking. So if we zoom out and say efficiency is the byproduct, what causes that? So there's two different things that can cause that. First, there's insulation, uh, and then there's thermal mass. And so to compare the difference here, if I was to use uh, a bit of an analogy, living in the north, this is something we experience all the time. So insulation is when it's cold out and I put on a jacket and I'm nice and warm. Thermal mass is if I jump into a hot tub. So even if uh, the power goes out and that water was at 101 degrees Fahrenheit, the thermal mass of that water is going to uh, provide some warmth. In both situations, whether it's a jacket, uh, which is light and portable, or it's heavy, <laughs> Something like a hot tub, uh, they are going to keep whoever's inside uh, nice and warm. The double walled insulation, while it's a lighter method of trying to achieve the same net result in efficiency, I'm not sure it actually provides a benefit. If you look at the Summit S6, this comes in at 236 pounds. And so while that's a little bit lighter than some of the ceramic Komodo models at 236 pounds, this is not throw it in the back of the pickup truck and head to a tailgate and start cooking with it. It's still very heavy. And while I go on a very, very short, I promise I'll keep it short, uh, tangent here, because this is not necessarily a criticism of Weber, but efficiency as the end goal, efficiency is the enemy of great barbecue. If you look at some of the best barbecue that you can imagine, you're probably thinking about something like going down to Texas and having some food off of an offset smoker. If we think about the worst possible vessel, we could find that in almost every kitchen uh, across North America, which is your oven. It's a very insulated box that uses a low amount of energy. And if you were to try and make barbecue uh, in there, it would be absolutely terrible. So efficiency is the enemy of barbecue. And this is something that all Komodos to some degree have in common but applied, whether it's the insulation or it's the form factor uh, and the clearance from the fire in the Weber Summit, this is worse. I did a test comparing the Summit versus the Golden's cast iron Kamado, the Primo ceramic Kamado, as well as the Kamado Joe, uh, Big Joe Series 3 ceramic Kamado, and the Weber uh, Summit did worse on a series of tests. So the first thing that I looked for is the conduction energy of what energy is being transferred from a metal heat diffuser plate versus a ceramic uh, diffuser plate, and I was seeing the highest temperatures. So this is telling us uh, that we are more likely to burn the bottom of whatever we are cooking on a metal diffuser plate versus a ceramic diffuser plate. This could also be the clearance, which is the least uh, amount of clearance in something like the Summit versus any of those other uh, Komodo brands that I mentioned. The second thing that I looked for is the evaporative cooling. So by placing the same amount of water in a sponge uh, in all those Komodos and running them for a couple hours, we are able to evaporate the least amount of water in the Weber Summit. And this speaks to the convection uh, energy or the amount of air uh, moving inside of the grill, which I noticed on things like my uh, brisket or pulled pork is that I'm just not able to generate as good of a bark on the Summit as a competing brand. So while the double walled insulation feature is advertised as a benefit on the Summit, having cooked side by side to the non-insulated 22 inch Weber Smoky Mountain, the food tastes better on the Smoky Mountain. It is not as efficient. It's leaking some of that air that allows me to burn a cleaner, hotter fire and get even better smoking results. So I don't think that that 
moved the uh, goalposts any further down the field in terms of coming into the Komodo category and providing uh, incremental benefit and improvement. Speaking of uh, benefit and improvement, something else that all other competing Komodo brands try and do is this notion of two zone cooking. And it's a real thing. I wondered a few years ago, I didn't know if this was marketing or hype. So I set up a two zone uh, setup inside of one of my Komodos and I placed temperature probes beside the hot zone versus the cool zone up top. And I was able to record nearly a hundred degree Fahrenheit temperature difference inside of a one grill using the exact same fire. And so whether it's big green egg, with the Expander or Komodo Joe with the divide and conquer rack or Primo with its uh, two zone setup. Every other leading Komodo brand has this notion of two zone cooking and versatility. And this is something that's just not possible inside the Weber Summit. If we were to use the stock heat deflector plate and want to do a reverse sear, we have no access to our fire in terms of uh, doing that sear and we can't get a half moon deflector. So instead, what you're left with is something like these charcoal baskets. And again, I mentioned some things in price, I didn't cover this, but if we compare, again, the cost of this grill versus everything else in this space and the quality of these tin baskets, these are the same baskets that you get on a $100 Weber kettle uh, on clearance on a big box store. If I compare sort of the quality, I, I don't wanna step on these and absolutely uh, destroy them, but if I were to put any weight on this, this would be flat as a pancake. Compare that to something like the Kickash basket. There we go, so we're on it. So this is the Kickash basket made for the Weber Summit Komodo. And as you can see, I'm a couple briskets north of 200 pounds and I'm not doing any damage to this basket. It is made incredibly well. Since I have it out, let me show you uh, what it looks like inside the Summit. Drop in the Kickash basket and then we would add our cooking grate above. While we're here, why don't I uh, show you just what I was talking about, some of the measurements. So the Weber Summit, unlike the Komodo Joe or the Big Green Egg, where you move your food up and down, uh, in the Weber Summit, you're able to move your charcoal up and down, which sounds good in theory, but in practice, if you want to go from a reverse sear state, for example, um, and have high clearance and then end up really close to the fire, there's not a good way to do that with an active fire. So our choice would be either having our charcoal grate down low, so we have our fire down here, or we could drop the charcoal grate in the upper position like this and place our cooking grid above. In the upper position, the distance that we have between the charcoal fire and our food above that is four and a half inches. In the lowest possible position, the distance that we have from our fire to our food is nine and a half inches. Let me show you how that compares. Start with my Komodo Joe Big Joe Series 1, which is the shortest Komodo Joe uh, Big Joe. So the height that I have from the bottom of my kickash basket to the grate is 11 and a half inches. So I've got two additional inches of clearance. And I should mention this is the stock two tier dividing conquer rack system, but the series three raised rack system is compatible inside the Big Joe series one. Let me show you that. So there that's installed. And uh, by the way, you can see that this opens and closes and doesn't touch, gives us a little bit more versatility for $70. And this, it does not fit inside the Weber Summit. I've tested it. The series one and two can with a little bit of force, but now we are all the way up to 14 and a half inches to our food in terms of the clearance that we have from our fire. So none of that's to say that quality or higher price necessarily equates to better barbecue. You can make amazing barbecue in something like a filing cabinet, for example. But at $2,000, getting the same very small half baskets that are flimsy tin in material just isn't competitive to the build quality and materials that you get stock included in other Komodo brands and or that's available uh, in the third party market, something like that uh, kick ash basket. And it doesn't stop just at the charcoal baskets too. You do any reading online and I validate it with the uh, temperature accuracy, but the bimetal temperature gauge that you get on the Weber Summit is not of the same caliber uh, that you get on something like Big Green Egg or Komodo Joe, and you do a quick little search on the accuracy uh, online for something like the Summit Bimetal Gauge. And this is another area I just feel could be improved, especially given the premium 
price. While we're on uh, improvements for the price, some things from a build quality perspective that could be improved, while I do appreciate having the small amount of gasket material, similar uh, like oven gasket material to what you get on the Komodo Joe Series 2 and higher, but uh, unlike uh, where it's glued on there, this is stapled in uh, and there's been some issues online of these falling off and then there's not a way to reattach that when it's stapled. That could be maybe a little bit uh, better in terms of a gasket material. And what for me, uh, I would absolutely love to see an improvement on is not having the same, uh, around a hundred dollar kettle, you get the exact same ash removal system. And this is what we have with the one touch system um, in the summit. Now, the pro is if you're familiar and comfortable with that, this will be, you know, uh, really easy for you to uh, get used to and adapt to. But uh, most of these uh, premium Kamados at this price point, something of the summit, they can also be installed in a table configuration. And a big limitation of something like the stock Weber system is that this is not table installation friendly, or at least without a lot of work to build in a cabinet where you can have a hidden door and then reach in underneath and uh, pull that ash removal system out. And so that uh, severely limits some of the options that you have in terms of adding one of these to your backyard. And one more thing, just kind of again on that price, just to put it in perspective, maybe a little bit of where this is in the industry. Now I'm going more expensive. I'm adding about another you know, $800, but look at something like the uh, Lone Star Offset. This is my uh, Lone Star Santa Maria. But if you look at the Lone Star Offset, it is nearly 700 pounds of quarter inch American steel welded by hand with a tell true thermometer at not that different of a price than something like the Weber Summit, which is coming with accessories like this cheap tin or the bimetal gauge, which is not hugely accurate or the same ash removal system on a hundred dollar kettle. It just doesn't feel as premium as the price suggests you're going to be getting. Last on my list is innovation. And so this is where I feel there is a bit of an opportunity miss. I at least appreciate brands like Kamado Joe have addressed some of the usability complaints that people have. Like for example, get your ash out. Kamado Joe has an included ash removal system or the dome is heavy, uh, the airlift hinge or the control tower top. I can't remember where my vents are. And uh, speaking of the control tower top, so the Weber rapid uh, damper system, it works like this where you could have it all the way open if I want to have my vents uh, in a position. I open it and it slams shut and moves uh, where the uh, temperature settings was. And so this is again, not an area where I think Weber had an opportunity to do something unique. Not only do I not like the damper at the top center compared to kettles or, or my Smoky Mountain that's on the side, I think it's also worse in terms of its ability to hold the vent setting that you have when you're opening and closing your dome. So as we reach the end, if you're in the market, for a Kamado, should you go out and buy the Weber Summit? I have a hard time finding an answer as to why uh, that could be a yes. You have all the limitations of all other Kamados, but made worse based on a smaller, tighter form factor, the lack of accessories and ecosystems, the lack of versatility in terms of multi-zone cooking and access to our fire. And this shows up in data, whether I see it in infrared and it shows up in the results in the food. And you just can't apply some of the tips and techniques to try and overcome these issues and burn a cleaner, hotter fire as well in the Weber Summit as I can in almost any other ceramic Kamado that I've ever tried, like applying my double indirect setup and a whole bunch of other tips and techniques that we've developed along the way. So as I opened with in the beginning, if you have one, despite all of these limitations and holdbacks, the food is not night and day difference between any uh, of these brands, but the usability and versatility in terms of being able to do more things in your backyard is absolutely night and day. And as much as it pains me to say this as someone who started their charcoal grilling and smoking journey on a Weber product and somebody who absolutely still loves and uses my Weber Smoky Mountain, if I was in the market looking for a Kamado, I think I'd place the Weber Summit dead last on a very long list of better options. I hope you found this review uh, helpful. I tried to stick as much as possible to just the facts in terms of the specs, the prices, as well as data and the performance. And having given this a 
full year, the Weber Summit doesn't make my recommended buy list. If you have any questions about this review or any other grill, be sure to check out my members live section. I go live once a month and can answer questions real time uh, about this versus what I tried to anticipate in things like this uh, pre-recorded video. That's it for today. I'm James from Smoke That Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. Thank you.